Hello, I'm Shannon Gregory of Microcell Sciences. We do live and layered blood cell microscopy. First of all, I wanted to explain what that is. It's where we put a little bit of blood on a microscope slide. We take numerous different slides and we walk you through what the sample is telling us um, by seeing what's happening in the blood microbiome. So I wanted to go over today's video is all about questions I get all of the time. So the first question we do get is probably the absolute biggest question. And that is, where do we get parasites? Parasites are an interesting thing. And we do have another video if you want to go see in regards to parasites that is a little more in detail. But parasites is an awful name, of course. First of all, we hear the word parasites and we're like, what? But in general, we are exposed to this on a day-to-day -day basis. This is in our food. This is a travel. This is our jobs, life in general. I mean, I see people, clients, that clean sewage for a living. Of course, they're gonna have a higher amount of parasites and bacteria. Having children and animals, this is another massive component of where these pathogens can come in. We see numerous types of parasites. We see worms, we see eggs, we see all sorts of different things going through the sample. It's always a little shocking when we do see a big, large, long worm kind of move across the screen. These are definitely fixable. There's lots of different things that we can do to really help rid our body of this. And we do have many appropriate products to address this. The next question, which is our second biggest question is, how is live blood cell different than regular blood work? Now, this is again another question where we look at things very differently than Western medicine does. There are quite a few things that do line up very much with Western medicine, such as iron, such as B12, you know, liver function. Um, if we're seeing kidney issues, sometimes that'll come up on regular blood work for protein. So one of the things that makes us different than regular blood work is we're looking at the sample live. And this is where there is skepticism behind us looking at the sample live. Um, however, looking at the sample live, it is a clear blood smear. You can see what the immune is doing. You can see live pathogens and what they're doing um, and ultimately what the terrain is doing. We look for different things that Western medicine doesn't, such as metals, like I said, parasites, bacteria, toxins. Western medicine ultimately isn't looking for how toxic is our liver how toxic is our gallbladder you know and these are things that we're exposed to on a regular basis and it's the filter of our body so a lot of the time we need to support this so it's really important to kind of see where are those parameters at so we can improve them and change numbers so for instance i have people come in that may have stage four liver issues or a fatty liver, and these are things that together, using the live blood cell, we can reduce the fatty liver, um, and I've done it numerous times, and the beautiful thing is the proof is in the pudding. They go back to their Western medicine, have blood work done again, and the doctors are amazed to see that the fatty liver numbers, the quantitative numbers, have come down. Doctors in regular blood work use quantitative numbers, such as iron component, you know, what are those numbers? Neutrophils, what are those numbers? That's your immune system. Well, we use a form of quantitative numbers. We're looking how many are we seeing throughout the four or five samples that we are looking at. Um, and that gives us a picture. Another very important thing that my personal company does, um, and I don't think there's a lot of other people, is we know the pathology behind chronic infections such as Lyme disease, autoimmune, things like that. They present very uh, specifically in the blood. We also have top of the line cameras. Another huge question is, is why are we seeing protein in my blood? How does that get there? Well, we do see numerous type of leaky gut. Just found some undigested fat. And then to your right, that long strand is yeah. undigested protein. 
And what that means is nowadays we have this big balloon in our gut and it's called the gut lumen. And that gut lumen unfortunately becomes leaky. It becomes perforated because of all of the exposure from everything in the environment and food and, and toxins and things like that. Well, that gut lumen gets little tiny perforations in it and unfortunately food starts leaking out. Probably from my research, about 65% of people do have leaky gut, unfortunately. Um, and that's again also from all the processed food that we're eating. This enables protein, fats, um, things like that to leak out of the gut and in small microscopic forms. I often will tell my clients they need to chew their food more. As you know, being an old blood type, you tend to scarf your food down and not chew it enough, and therefore it takes the gut so much more to break it down. But we do see fats, we do see protein, um, and that's usually a digestive flag of things we do need to focus on and that the gut lumen is leaky. Next question is, how did all of this bacteria get in my blood. Well, again, bacteria is very much like parasites. It's environmental. If I look back at 14 years ago when I started my practice, I didn't see the amount of forms of bacteria that I do see now. It's a lot more progressive. And one of the reasons we have a lot more progressive bacteria is as the introduction of glass foams such as iPhones, things like that, even a decade ago, this enables bacteria to harbor on the glass surfaces, multiply and divide because glass is organic and it enables things to do that. Another component is our environment. Some of these bacteria we do see are very progressive ears, eyes, nose bacteria. They're on surfaces, they're everywhere, but it can create numerous amount of symptoms. For instance, if we're seeing strep and this individual has a lot of brain fog, maybe autism, things like that, that's a huge finding because that impedes the brain barrier. So as for bacteria, ultimately it's coming in from the environment. Ultimately, the immune system is on overload from everything we're exposed to from the environment. And this is where a lot of the time there's so much of certain kinds of bacteria in the blood that it doesn't recognize that it shouldn't be there and it's adapted to it. So we often will watch on screen uh, an immune cell pass right past a, ba a massive bacteria strain and it just doesn't see it because it's used to having it in that blood microbiome. So it's very, very common to see bacteria. Sicknesses, not doing antibiotics, which I don't recommend antibiotics, but sometimes we need it. The bacteria becomes overrun and this becomes a whole nother issue where we'll see a whole bunch of different lung type of bacterias um, that need to be addressed. Bacteria can create bloating, fatigue. Um, it can do numerous things because it shouldn't be in the body and like parasites, it's an infection. What does vaccinated blood look like? Now, this is a big one where I'm gonna kind of crush a few things that I have seen online because there is a lot of videos that my clients have sent the staff and I of completely wrong information being put out there in conjunction to having COVID and having the vaccine. There are no chips in people's blood. There are very specific things we are seeing, okay? Nanoparticles is one. Nanoparticles are the vaccine transportation unit. Another common thing I've seen in the video is people saying they're seeing huge white components. And I'm gonna show you an image of what it looks like. So people are saying they're seeing things like that in the blood. This is something as a company I've seen since I've been licensed. And basically this is protein. This is exactly what I just talked about where people have leaky gut. Some people online are even calling this parasites that do live blood. And this is a lack of education, unfortunately. The environment has changed so much since COVID. And there are other things we're seeing. People are 
describing and showing videos, live blood cell videos of colorful objects seen in the blood. Again, that is not related to COVID vaccines at all. What you'll need to do is, I'm not going to get into that pathology. However, you can book an appointment if you want to get into what these colorful objects are in our blood that we're seeing in some individuals. As well for the COVID uh, vaccines, um, you know, we certainly are seeing a lot more people that do have, you know, numbness, heart pains, things like that. There's no doubt that the COVID vaccine did put an impact on us. There's no doubt about it. And it did put an impact on our immune system. We did see some people did not take the vaccines very well and that it really tanked their system. You know, heart problems, things like that. A lot of these individuals that have long-term COVID, unfortunately, had a very messy microbiome beforehand. And the COVID vaccine triggered other things or having COVID has triggered other things and brought them to the forefront. So I hope this helps a lot for some people to kind of go through the kind of the seven top questions. Um, and we hope to see you subscribe if you want to see more videos like this i'm going to be putting out lots of different interesting videos on all different things thanks for watching